What's up, Cal Gang? Today we have this integral in our hands, and it's giving us the bounds and a substitution that we can use to solve it. So let's just draw it out and see what we look like. So we have y is equal to x, looks just like that. y is equal to 3x, it's going to look just like that. Uh, x, y is equal to 1, you can actually rewrite this is y is equal to 1 over x, and we know what this looks like. It has a point at 1, 1, and it kind of just slopes around down like that. And y is equal, or x, y is equal to 3, it kind of looks the same, y is equal to 3 over x. So if you put in like x is equal to 3, y is equal to 1, so you can kind of imagine it's going to look something like this. So it gives us this bound right here, this area. And we're looking at that and like, that's pretty tough to solve. I mean, like you'd have to set up like probably like five integrals if you wanted to solve it like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these substitutions that were given to us, and we're going to rewrite it. So we have our four lines that are intercepting it, and we need to rewrite it basically in terms of u and v. So we have that x is equal to u and v. So let's start with y is equal to x. So we have that y is equal to v, and then x is equal to u over v. And what happens if you move this over? Because uv squared is equal to u. So this is one of our lines. Let's do it for the next one. y is equal to 3x. Uh, you'll see a pattern here. v is equal to 3u over v. That means that v squared is equal to 3u, right? Now we have, so this is another line. We have xy is equal to 1. If we rewrite this, you'll have um, u over v times v is equal to 1, which is just u is equal to 1. This is another line. And xy is equal to 3. That turns into u over v times v is equal to 3, which just gives you, of course, u is equal to 3. So now that we have these four lines turned basically changed, we can write another graph. Right? Let's put it right here. And you don't, I don't need to be precise, actually, on the, uh, the numbers for this. It'd be nice to look at, but what you really need is just a general image of what's going on here. So it, this is oh, right. this is u, and this is v, not x and y. So u is equal to 1, kind of just goes up like this. u is equal to 3, goes up like this. So now we have v squared is equal to u. How are we going to write that? Well, obviously, it just kind of goes here. This is like 1, 1. It looks around like that. And then uh, v squared is equal to 3u. It's going to look like this. And now we're looking at this, and we have this region here. And we look at it, and we're like, wait a second. We can solve this. This is pretty solvable, because it's a straight line here. So all you have to do is you have to differentiate with respect to v, and it goes up. So we're going to rewrite these. So this is going to be v is equal to square root of u. And it's positive or negative square root of u, but because we're only in the positive axis, it just has to be positive u. And v is equal to square root of 3u. So we have these. This is a basically, like, this is this line, square root of u, and this is 3 squared of u, or square root of 3u. And it's going between those two. So our integral is going to look like, we're going to have our double integral. So it's going to go from square root of u to square root of 3u. And then our u bounds are going to go from u is equal to 1 to u is equal to 3. And then we have to rewrite this in terms of u and v, because we're solving in u and v. So it's u, v times v, which is just going to become u, but we're missing something. We need the Jacobian. We haven't done a Jacobian yet. So we'll do the Jacobian over here. Jacobian is the matrix of the differential with respect to u, or the differential of x with respect to u, and then differential with respect of x with respect to v, and then same for y. So the differential of x with respect to u is just going to be 1 over v, the differential of x with respect to v is going to be complicated, and I don't really feel like solving that. And you're going to see we don't need to solve that later. We can, uh, and you probably should for most of these problems, but I, I already know what's going to happen. So if you differentiate y with respect to u, it's going to give you 0. And this is y, because if you put this number here, you'd multiply it by it, it'd be 0. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, in this case, you don't. In the next case, you probably would. And then the differential of y with respect to v is 1. So that just gives us 1 over v which means I would go over to our integral and we just put the Jacobian in, one over, or one over v. That looks really ugly. And then it becomes, um, so we're differentiating with respect to v first, so dv, du. And that's our integral. 
Now we can go ahead and solve this integral. I need to do some erasing to solve it, because I wrote too big. All right, we're solving this integral now. That's a V. I hate how the V's and the U's look the exact same, and we're expected to use both of them. But you know what I mean. One, three. And you can actually pull the one over V out. Or actually, you can pull the U out, because we're not using U, so we can just pull it there, because we don't need to use it for now. So we end up with one over V, D, V, D, U. So what does this become? This obviously becomes, oh, and I write it for my bounds. Square root of three U. This becomes ln of V. So this is equal to one to three U, uh, L, N of V from, Square root of u, square root of 3u, du, is equal to 1 to 3u, and then it becomes, so it's ln square root of 3u minus ln of square root of u, du. So now we look at our properties of ln. ln, if you have the square root inside, what you can do is you can actually bring out a 1 half and it gets rid of the square root on the inside. So this is equal to one half ln three u minus ln of u du. And then, you know, when you're subtracting lns, it's like the same as you can divide the insides of them. So if you take three u and divide it by u, you just get three. So this is equal to one three u one half ln of three du. So now, we're almost done. Uh, the glare, am I? I am the glare. This is equal to, so you can bring out the one half integral Actually, you can bring out the 1 half ln 3 because that's a constant. And then the integral from 1 to 3 of u du. I'm sure you guys know how to solve this at this point. What's it going to become? It's going to become 1 half ln of 3. And it's going to be, so it's going to be 9 over 2 minus 1 half, right? Uh, solving this gives you, this is uh, equal to 8 over 2, right? Then you take the 1 half out, so it'll become 4 over 2 ln 3. This is also just equal to 2 ln 3. That's our final answer right there. 2 ln 3. Kind of a big problem, lots of stuff to keep track of. But the most important thing is don't forget the Jacobian. And uh, just, just keep solving, just plug stuff in, get some numbers, figure it out. I believe in you guys, so uh, good luck on your calc homework and good luck on your calc.